Hey guys, it's Hassan here. And in today's video, I would like to talk about how I landed my first software developer job as a self-taught developer, as well as give you some tips and tricks for if you are also going through the process of trying to land your first job or even you are learning to code with the aim of eventually landing your first software develop developer role. And just a heads up, once you land your first role and you stay in it for a decent period of time, let's say between one to two years, getting the next job if you wish to is a lot easier and going forward getting um, jobs in a similar position will be much easier. So it's all about landing that first role. After you land the first role, it becomes so much easier to get future roles. Okay, so let, let me go through the story of how I landed my first software developer job. As I mentioned before, I'm a self-taught software developer. So that means I don't have a computer science degree. So I had to go through the process of teaching myself to learn to code. So at the time I was 26 years old and I just dropped out of applying for a graduate medical uh, medicine program and I was traveling and I'd always enjoyed programming and coding but I never considered it as something I could do as a, as a job and I was because I had a lot of spare time because I wasn't working I read a lot of books and I came across a book um, written about Elon Musk and he talked about it talked about how he built the built PayPal and how he pretty much taught himself to code and I thought oh that's pretty interesting because in other industries you have to get credentials before you're able to actually do your job for example if you want to be a doctor you'd have to go through the the, 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 the program the, the medical program um, and get the credentials you need the degree and finish medical school before you can actually start working and practicing medicine. Same for law, if you want to become a lawyer, you have to go to law school and you have to um, finish the course and then you can start practicing law. Whereas in programming or coding or being a software engineer, you can just pretty much learn the skills you need for yourself and once you're good enough, then you can start applying for jobs and there's no set time you have to study or there's no set period of time you have to allocate to um, to learn to program. If you can pick it up really, really quickly and then you land, you land a job, then you're, you're good enough pretty much. So I like the fact that you can learn at your own pace. And because I'm a very intense person, I like to really focus on something. Um, I like the ability to have uh, control over my own study period. I don't want to have to rely on a university professor on, or an exam saying, oh, now you're qualified because you studied for five years or whatever it may be. So in summary, I thought it was really cool that you could pick up the skills yourself and you can learn in your own time. And I never thought that was an option until I read that book. So that's what I did. After I read that book, I did some research, I watched a lot of YouTube videos, and that's when I decided to make the leap. And then from that day forward, I decided to code every single day for two to three hours, or learn to code for two to three hours every day. And that's what I did for over, I think, a year and a half, two years. I coded every single day for two to three hours. And of course, I had other jobs and other um, responsibilities, but I kept up with that. I kept up with that routine. And while I was learning to code, I came across a coding school near where I lived. And I attended the coding school, and then I realized I know I'm a rubbish programmer. I was the worst in the class, without a doubt. And I thought, wow, I have so much to learn. So that's when I decided that, okay, I need to go ahead and get some experience somehow. So I went on, I think it was Craigslist at the time. It's like a, a platform where you can, you know, sell, sell stuff or you could even find jobs or whatnot. And there was a, a customer support role in a tech company. And I thought, hmm, that could be an interesting opportunity here. 
And I mentioned you, 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 you can learn, you know, to code, like when using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, which is what I was learning at the time. So I thought, hey, why not? And I applied. And the starting salary was about two, two to three dollars, which is a very small amount. And I just, I took, I took, I just took the role. Okay, I went for the interview. They, they, they seemed to like me, so I took the role just for the experience. And then I started working in the role. And it's a full-time position, so I was earning like five hundred, six hundred dollars a month, which is very, very little. Way. It's not enough for me. It wasn't enough for me to live on. So I had to use my savings to supplement my um, my income, and I quit my my, my job which was a, I was a math teacher, essentially. I was earning between like two to $3,000 per, per month, which is okay. So I pretty much, um, I took a big salary cut, like a 75, no, yeah, a very big salary cut. And I started my job in technical customer support. That was my official title. And I got to learn, you know, HTML, CSS, and even whilst I was on that job, I continued I continue to learn in my free time. I continue to study on using resources like uh, Udemy and YouTube and Free Code Camp. I do all the courses I could, and I also got to work along with other with developers. So I'd sit sit next to them and speak to them and learn about their job and their role, and it was a great learning experience. Okay, so I did about six months of this, six to seven months of working in this. Uh, position and that's when I decided to attend a coding boot camp and in this boot camp I, ha I had to pay essentially about, about three thousand to four thousand dollars I don't remember exactly which is a lot of money for me for me at the time so I used all my savings everything I saved I pretty much put it all into, into the course and it's a three-month full-time intensive boot camp and that's where I decided that I was gonna be the best student in the class. So I pretty much stayed, I pretty much worked uh, my normal job uh, in the evenings, the, the customer support role in the evenings. And during the day, I would, um, I would study at this boot camp from nine to five. So it was a very, very intensive boot camp. And this would mean I was pretty much, I was working from nine, nine to five at the boot camp, and then from five to like eight or nine, I would, I would I work at the customer support role. This was pretty much a 12 hour shift from Monday to Friday. And then Saturday and Sunday, I'd also work um, during the day for, in the customer support role. And it was really, really tough, but I really, really wanted um, to become a programmer. So I, I put everything I could into it. And thankfully, the company I worked in the customer support role for noticed my efforts and decided after I finished the boot camp, they would offer me kind of like an internship as a software developer. And this lasted a few months. So after I finished the boot camp, which was very, very intensive, I went ahead and I transitioned to a kind of uh, mentorship, a men mentee role where I had a mentor, which was a CTO at the company I worked for, and he would gave me a, a kind of a list of resources resources to study and I would work, work my way through the resources and the company gave me uh, allocated time every day to study these resources and I'd have a meeting with him every week and we discuss our progress etc okay at the same time I was also working on my personal brand so if you look at my YouTube my YouTube channel you'll see I have various videos uh, of me completing uh, various tutorials from free code, free code camp and those videos have a lot of views now and at the same time working on various projects and this the personal brand and the portfolio and the github uh, repo where I'd store all my projects it helped me um, get get various opportunities I, I later found out that the company I work for saw my youtube channel and were impressed by you know my videos and that was that was kind of like part of the reason why they gave me the opportunity to have the mentee role at the company at the mentee or junior developer role at the company so i work i continue working at, at this company I, I then eventually transitioned from being a a mentee to an actual software developer and i stayed at this company for two years 
before eventually transitioning to another role. But that was, that's kind of my, like my story of how I landed my software developer, my first software developer role as a self-taught developer, okay? And just some tips and tricks from my story. The first is, I think you have, if you're a self-taught developer and you have, don't have a background in programming, I think you need to allocate at least two hours every day to learning to program for the information to stick. And if you want to follow my example, you can get a role at a tech company. It doesn't have to be um, as a customer support assistant. It could be as a QA tester. It could be as a marketer. Whatever it may be, the, the whole purpose of the role, just to get yourself amongst software developers so you can see what their job is like and learn from them if possible. Normally, software developers are very open to um, giving advice and helping others. So... If you're, if you're in the position to learn from them, I definitely would, and I would take any role I could to be around a software developer so I could eventually learn from them and then maybe transition into a similar role to, to them. The next is, I would say, try and get a some form of mentorship, whether that be attending a coding bootcamp or even hiring someone to be your mentor, which you can reach out to me, I'm happy to, uh, help you if you'd like to book a consultation with me I, I'm happy to do that and then at the same time work on your personal brand work on your portfolio store all your projects in github that really shows potential employers that you are passionate about becoming a programmer and it shows that you what your skills are and shows that you're motivated so it's a massive massive um, plus to have those things so I think if you take into account all those tips and tricks that I gave you and my story, hopefully this helps you land your first ever software developer role. If you're interested in booking a consultation with me, reach out to me via Instagram and subscribe to my YouTube channel and I hope to see you in the next video.